Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This is part 31 of the Acormis app playlist. In this video, we will work on the user account fragment. And before anything, let me just show you the screen that we will be working on in this video. So as you can see, this is the screen where the user can actually change the profile picture and just the user information. Okay, now let's actually get it started. And the first thing we want to do is to add some dependencies. So click on tools, go to Firebase. We need to add the Firebase storage dependency in here. Click on it. And here you need to add a dependency. So click on get started with cloud storage, then add cloud storage as they get to your app. I've already done that. So no need to add it one more time. And we also need to add another one for coroutines with Firebase. So add this one, I'll leave it in the description. And this one will just make us able to use Kotlin coroutines with Firebase. Next thing you want to add is the design of the fragment. So I'll leave that in the description. I'll leave the layout file and some drawables that we that needed. To add that, extend your rest file, go to the layout folder and paste that in. Click on OK. Um, let me just delete that real quick because this is for the large size. Let's paste it again and click on OK. Here you need to change this to layout and click on OK. Okay, now as you can see, there are two drawables are missed in the design, so let's add that. You need to copy them from the file and go to the drawables file or folder, paste that in, and you're good to go. Get back here, as you can see, you can see the preview of this screen. As you can see, we have this edit circle button or image. We have the user image, we have the first name edit text, last name edit text, the email edit text, and the text view for changing the password. Then we have a button to save the data. Okay, now let's actually start with a view model. Let's create a view model for the screen. And inside the view model package, we want to create a new one and call this user account view model. For this one, there are four dependencies and I'll talk about them now. Let's inject them in the constructor and let's also extend it from view model. We also want to annotate this with health view model. Okay, first thing, we need access to Firestore. We need Firebase authentication. We need the storage. And we need the application. The application here is used to access the content uh, resolver. Well, we can actually inject that or provide that with Dagger Health, but you can also just use the Android view model. So we need to change this to Android view model and here in a, you need to pass your application. So you have two options. The first one is as we're doing in here, just to inject the app and uh, use the Android view model and get the content resolver using this app instance, or we can actually provide the content resolver using Dagger Health and inject that in the constructor. I will use this way. And now let's actually create the states we have in this view model. First, we need the user state, which is going to have the user information. So private val user immutable state flow. This is going to have resource of user. And we make that unspecified initially. We want to expose this. Now we want another state for the edit info. So let's do that. Private val edit info. This is a mutable state flow resource of user. The same thing and specified. And I will just duplicate this and expose this state. Okay, now let's create a function to get the user information from Firestore. Function get user. Inside here we can say view model scope. We want to emit loading in our state. And now we can use Firestore.collection, access the user collection, and get our user document. And 
add on filler listener. Inside here, we want to get the user object. And then if this user is not null, which will not actually be null, but we just make a check here for more safety. Now we can launch view model scope to emit the success state. In here we will emit the error. So view model scope dot launch we emit resource dot error. Now that's it for this function. We can actually call this inside the init block. Get user. And in here, let's actually create another function to edit on the user information. Or update. Let's call this update user. And in here we want to get the user. This one. Uh, I think we have imported the wrong user package. Let's actually change that. Okay, delete this and in here, let's import this one and we can delete this. Now, another thing we want in here is the image URI. So we want to get that and this might be null and that's how being curly brackets. Let's first emit uh, the loading case. So I'm going to just copy this, but we want to change the state inside edit info or let's call this update info just as the name of our function so update here as well and just copy and paste okay but before this loading thing the first thing we want to validate our input so we can say val our input valid we can use the validate function validate email and we can pass our email this should be register validation success and we also want to check the first name and the last name so let's do that if the user dot first name we trim that and we make sure that it's not empty same thing for the last name After that, we can make a check. If the inputs are not valid, then we want to return. But before that, we want to actually emit an error. So let's copy this one, paste it. We can say, check your inputs. Okay, now this imagery will be null if the user have not changed the image and will not be null if the user changed the image. So. For that, we can make a check here. If imagery is null, we can call save user information. And in here, we can pass the user, and we need to pass a building value. And here, passes true. Let's create this function. And let's call this should retrieve old image. So we use this boolean to determine if we should keep the old image or update it. And you will see that in a bit. Now else we want to call save user information with a new image. And we want to pass the user and the imagery. Let's create that function as well. In this function, we will upload the image on fire storage. Then we will call the save user information function. And let's actually start implementing that. And for this, we actually want to run a transaction because if this boolean is true, then we want to retrieve the old image first, then update the user data. So let's do that. Let's actually say firestore.run transaction. Here we get the transaction. And inside here, we can say val document reference. I want to get the document, the user document, and say first store the collection. We get we access the user collection and we get the user document. After that, we want to get the current user. So val current user. We can say transaction dot get. We pass document reference. We can say to object 
and we cast this to our object. Now we can make a check if it should retrieve old image. We want to create the new user object with the new data. So we can say user.copy this user. We want to change the image path and put the one that we got it from the current user. So we can say image path current user dot image path. This is my penal, so we can do this. And we actually can also take this one inside the if statement. And finally, we can actually use transaction to set the new object. We can set it to our document reference and we can set the new user. Now, else than that, we only gonna set this user. So I'm gonna copy this one and say user. So that's it for this function. Now inside the save user information with new image, this one is a little bit tricky. However, we've done that before. Um, but here we actually forgot to add on success and add on failure. Let's do that. I want to just go up here and copy this one for the failure. And inside the listener, I also can do that. So I just copy this. And in here, we just want to change the state. And we want to emit the user. Now back to this function, as I said, this is tricky, but we actually done that in the products adder app. So what we want to do now is to upload the image first, then call this function and send the image path. Okay, let's do that. And in here we want to use Firebase with coroutines for that we want to launch a view model scope and we want to wrap everything with the try catch block. We want to catch any exception that could happen. And to upload an image on Firebase storage, we want to get the byte array of that image. And to do that, we first want to get the bitmap of that image. So let's actually get the bitmap. So we can say val image bitmap. We can use the media store class to do that. We can say get bitmap and here we pass the URI. And we also want the content resolver. That's why we need this application. Instance, we can say app or get application. In here, we want to get our client application, this one. And we can say content resolver. Then in here, we want to pass the image URI. Now we have our image bitmap. After that, we want to compress that image and reduce the quality so we don't get a large size. We first want an output stream and we want to use a byte array output stream because this is an image and the image uh, will be saved as a byte array. So we can say val byte array output stream byte array output stream. And in here we can say image bitmap dot compress. Here we use specify the, uh, the format. So we can say compress format JPEG. And we also want to specify the quality. In here, you can pass. Uh, for me, I, I normally pass 96. Uh, and the stream is this is stream byte array output stream. Now, inside here, we can get the byte array of that image. We can say image byte array. We can use our output stream to get that byte array output stream dot to byte array. And finally, we can actually save that. To do that, let's actually create a directory in our storage for that image. So let's say image directory. And we can use our storage instance. We can create a child through file images. And inside that child, we want to create another child. Uh, we can also do that in alternative way. We can add this slash. And now we add the next child. So we want to actually create a child for that specific user by his ID. Finally, we want to generate a random ID for that image. So we can use the UUID class dot random UUID. We can get that as a string or we don't need this. And now we can say val result image directory dot bot bot bytes. And we can put this image byte image byte array and finally to get the image url you can say val image url result dot we actually need to call the await function in here which is going to suspend this function in here 
Now we can say result.storage.downloadurl.await. We get a string for our image. Uh, this is actually a URI, so to convert that into a string, we can say to string. And finally, we just call save information in here. Save user information. And we want to send the user object with this image. So we can say user.copy image URL or image path equals to the image URL. And we need to pass false for this boolean value. And that's it actually. Now in the exception or in the catch block, we want to emit we want to emit an error. So let's copy this one, put it in here, and we can say e dot message dot to string. That's everything for the view model. Now we can go to the fragment. Uh, we want to create a fragment first. So inside the fragments package, let's actually create a new package. Call this settings. And let's create the first one for the user count fragment. Let's set up this fragment real quick. Now let's get the view model. And we don't need to forget to update this with Android entry point. Now in the on view created, in here we want to actually collect the stats. So let's do that. So we'll go to the card fragment or any fragment because we use that a lot. I mean collecting the stat. We just have the same code and I'm just gonna change now in here. So in loading, we can call show user loading, create that. And in success, we can say hide user loading. In error, we can actually show a toast. So copy this, paste it in here. Now inside the show user loading, we want to hide all the views except the uh, progress bar. So let's say binding dot apply progress bar count dot visibility equals view dot visible. We want to hide the image user. Duplicate this like that. And we also have image edit. The first name edit text. The last name edit text. The email edit text. The update password. And the button. You can delete this. Now we can actually copy everything in here and change that to the opposite. So visible will be invisible or this one will be gone and the other is going to be visible. And in success, we also need to show the user information. So we can say show user information. We want to send the user it to data. This won't be null that and then here we can say binding to apply we first want to show the image user use a glide and we load the user image into the user image and we want to show the first name we want to show the last name I'm going to show the email and that's it for this function. Um, now let's actually collect the other state that we have in the view model. So lifecycle scope dot started view model dot update info. And we say collect latest. I will copy everything here, but this time we want to show the animation in the button. And then here we revert the animation and then we can navigate back. Now let's set a click listener for the save button. In this click listener, we want to create the user object and call update user from the view model. So let's say binding dot apply. We need to get the first name and, and we trim that last name. Same thing, I'll copy this. Uh, for the email, 
and then we can create the user object. And we can save your model dot update user. We need to send the user and the URI. We don't have the URI yet, so let's go up and create that and make it initially null. Private var image URI, which is a URI, and make this null. Go here and pass that image URI. Now let's also set a click listener on the edit image. So we can say binding dot image edit set on a click listener and now we want to launch an implicit intent to select from the gallery so let's create the intent but before that let's actually have an activity launcher so we can say private letting it var image activity result launcher which is an activity result launcher and here we want to get the intent now we want to register this Activity result launcher inside the onCreate function. Register for activity result. And here we want to specify the contract. In our case, on activity result, activity result contract dot start activity for result. And here we have a callback for our result. Now, in here, we can get the imagery. So we can assign that to our imagery object. You can say it dot data dot data and like this we get the imagery now we also want to show the selected image in our image view you can use a glide for that and pass the imagery now now let's go down and i just want to make an edit here in this glide we want to add the error image in case the image URL was, so we can say color drawable and show black color. And in here we want to create the intent. We want to pass the action. Uh, this action is uh, get content. And now we want to specify what content we want to get. In our case on the images. And finally, we can say image activity launcher dot launch, and we can send the intent. And and the last thing is to provide the Firebase storage in our app module. So let's do that. Provide storage. You can say Firebase storage dot get instance dot reference. Okay, now to test the app, go to the navigation and let's add that fragment to our navigation graph inside the shopping graph so let's add that user account fragment and let's make this uh, the home fragment so we can see it and let's click on launch okay let's test the app now i'm gonna just change the name here so let's say i'll add anything actually so it did this name let's click on save okay Let's exit the app, open it again. We should get the edit name. Okay, it was saved. Now we can also change the image. So click on here, select any image you have. So let's say this black image, click on save. Wait some moments until the image is uploaded. Okay, I have waited for like 30 seconds and nothing changed. I think we have a problem. So I'm gonna cut the video, see the problem and get back to you. Okay, so what I did to solve the problem is changing the emulator. So the problem was from the emulator because because that emulator does not have the Google Play services. So I just changed the emulator to this one. And actually, the, now it works. So let me just go to the camera, take a new picture. Let's go here, take a picture of this cat. And get back to our app. Let's put that cat as a profile picture. And let me also change the name. So add to, click on save. Wait some time. And as you can see, this is what's saved. If I close this and open the app again, we should see the image. Okay, here you go. The image shows and everything is cool. One last thing is for this forgot and change password text view. So if you want to set or if you want to implement that, we already done that. But I'll show, just show you how to do it real quick. 
So you can add a click listener here. You can say TV sit on click listener. And here we you can call sit up bottom sheet dialog. We have the implementation of this function in this file. And the rest is on you. So in here you need to call a function from the view model to send the reset uh, email to the user email. And as you can see, if I click on forgot or change password, we will see this bottom sheet. Here we can actually receive the password. Okay, that was all for this video. I hope you, if you want to receive more Android content. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and hope you have a great day. Catch you in the next one.